Hello, hello, this is Robin Sampson with BibleJournalClasses.com, and we are doing a 52-week challenge where we're making a tag every week. So I already made a video to show you how I laid out my Bible verses and printed them. So these are some examples of tags that I've already made and played with and I'm learning. This one was, I covered the back and brought the back around to the front. That was one method. This one was an actual, um, I binded it like you do a quilt. And, you know, these are made with word strips, which I explained on the video. And I'm learning how to embroider, because I'm really not, this is a new thing for me. But this was uh, on love, was the prompt for the week. You go to my blog, you read the prompt in the Bible study, and then you go and make your tag. This was on being blessed and had some butterfly appliques. This one was on forgiveness and has a lazy daisy was the prompt. This one was seed stitching and on strength, I think it was. And then on faith, and we had, I think it was yo-yos or it might've been a flower. And of course, this was on God's promises and I did the clouds and a rainbow with some little buttons. So we're going to get started. I'm going to show you what you have to do to make get ready for the slow stitch. So this is what I use. You don't have to use it. There's lots of videos out there to show you how to print on your own fabric. But I did this because it's faster. I just put it in the ink jet printer and this was 25 sheets. So I use this. This is how they come out. Of course, I've already cut into these, but they come out on fabric. And what you have to do is cut you have to score it and take the paper off the back and then you have very nice quality uh, white fabric that you can sew on. So here's some of the things that you have to have on hand. A ruler, scissors, my regular scissors, singer for paper, for cloth, and then I have a paper scissors and I have applique scissors because you have to cut around some really tiny places. Then I have an iron, which you'll see in just a minute. And I have this applique mat. I was thrilled to find this 12 inch size at a quilt show. It's a silicone applique fuse mat and it keeps your iron from getting applique sticky on it. The ones I had before were just huge and they were way too big. So I was so happy to find this little one. Then you're gonna need some, you don't have to have all these things. This is my Wonder Under scraps. So we're gonna use some Wonder Under. And then you'll need, if you want to, if you want thicker tags, like I have here, you'll want to have some batting. And I have iron on batting, and I just went ahead and cut a whole bunch beforehand because I have a AccuQuilt. And the bumpy side, sometimes it's hard to find, is um, fusible. So I just iron the tag right onto here and then it's ready to sew. If you don't use a quilt, and you can use an old quilt, I use sometimes I use old quilts in the middle, um, you, can, you have to use some kind of stabilizer. So if you don't use the quilt, use a stabilizer or you're gonna have some trouble sewing. Okay, and then all these are not necessary, but this is handy to poke the little hole in the top of your tag. And I always have marker, these are heat pens that disappear. You don't have to use them, you can use some, any, anything that works for you for marking. You'll need some pins and needles. Um, for embroidery, they recommend Miller's needles, uh, Milner's needles, uh, 10 or 11. The, the eyes are very tiny, so if you're like me, I have to use a little threader. And then you'll need some embroidery floss. Embroidery floss comes in six strands, and you'll need to separate that because, because these are small, usually I only use one or two strands, except for like the seed stitching and around this rainbow 
I use three strands, but the, I rarely use any more than three strands. And any time you're doing this shashiko, I'm probably butchering the pronouncement, you, I just use three strands of th thread. So we have our batting, we have our wonder under, and our needles. Now we're gonna need some fabric. And oh, I use a clapper, which is just helps us with heat, but if you don't have one, don't worry about it. That's just, this is just a lot of stuff I have because I quilt. So I used my AccuQuilt and I ran my Go Quilter and I ran this in and got a piece of fabric already cut. But this is very easy to cut. You can just cut it with scissors. I do all mine six and a half by three and a half. I think in the last video I said six by three, but it's six and a half by three because that's the size of my die. And then if you're gonna do a back, you're gonna to have to have it a little bit bigger, almost a full inch bigger to bring it around to the front. So now I have, I wanna put my tag onto my batting and your iron has to get pretty hot. I just returned an iron because it didn't get hot enough to fuse my Wonder Under. And that's all you have to do to iron on the batting and now it's stuck on there and you can start sewing at any time. But I'm gonna do a few more things. One thing I do is I fold it in half up at the top and I just eyeball this. I used to mark it and now I just eyeball it. I just take a little snip and it's even because I folded it in half. And then you're gonna have, this'll disappear before I'm done because it's this disappears with heat from your iron. They're called friction clickers. And I like the clickers better than the other ones. And um, in fact, that's probably gonna go down a little bit more. And then I use a punch, but I can't do it now because I have to put a backing on it. So I'm gonna get this all done. I'm, pr I'm not gonna bind it because that's a whole nother video. I'm just gonna do the part that we, we need so I can start stitching. So this week's tag was supposed to have two hearts on it. So here's how we do the applique. I have way more than I need. Just get started. And I, I have my scraps in little containers like this by color. So I'm just gonna dig through and get a red heart, red for my heart. Oh, I didn't know that was in there. This would be very pretty on that too. So you never know what you're gonna find. <laughs> and then I thought I'd do, and that red goes good. I'm gonna match it up with that. And then I'm gonna do a pink this definitely don't go, you know, pink is very hard to match. You know, as a designer, when I design uh, Bible journal kits, I have a lot of trouble matching pink. Here we go, I'm gonna use this one. That's perfect. And I'm just gonna do two tiny hearts. So you, you cut out a little scrap of fabric And I'm gonna freehand my hearts. I usually have a template of some kind, but I'm gonna freehand these. So I'm only placing it carefully because I like to keep my wonder under. I don't like to buy any more if I don't need it. And then I keep my leftover, I have it on a bolt, but I usually just have dig into my scrap and keep it here. And now here's where you use your applique mat. So you don't get it stuck on your iron and you count to about 10. This is a, a Panasonic cordless iron and it really keeps the heat. You would think that you would have to reheat it because you're sitting over here for 10 seconds, but it really does keep the heat well and it heat reheats very fast. And the way you do this, I forgot to tell you, is you do it on the bumpy side. So you test it and make sure you're on the bumpy side. So this is the size of my tag. So I have an idea 
that my heart is going to have to be about this size. I need something to write on. And then what I'm probably going to do, and I keep these scraps. I'm only going to use a little bit of this. And the reason we're going to put it on with Wonder Under is not just to stick on here. It's because once you do stick it on here, no matter how you sew it on, it's never going to come off. Because if you don't use this, if you just put it on by itself, you could stitch it on, but more than likely it's going to ravel and you don't want to do that. Before I go any further, let me go ahead and get my Bible verse out. You, you kind of try to pinch the side, and then here, this is now fabric. And if you'll notice, I did this uh, verse in gray. The glory to thee is not part of the verse, but I wanted to say that because the verse doesn't make sense without it. And it's great and awesome God who keeps the covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments in Nehemiah. So we're going to put this on here, but first I have to iron it to... I should have done this when I did the red and pink. And you see how we've cut rough cut around it. You don't cut it out perfectly until after you put it on the wonder under. You just rough cut it and have lots of room, you know, let, you know, a half inch or so around the, the edges. And it's more important to cool this than it is to, but you gotta get a good 10 seconds on and I actually got 30 seconds off before you start peeling things. So now my verse is ready. And then we cut it. And I really like these little scissors for cutting. They're applique scissors. I'll put, let's see if I can read the name. Oh, this is the other thing you need, get your eyes. And it's Karen Buckley applique scissors, and I love them. Now we're going to cut the scissors, and you know what? If I mess up, I still have lots of room. And you know what? That pink, I kind of wasted some space, so let me show you what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to iron on this pink and get rid of that heart, and I'm gonna make another heart. See, it's all gone. So now I'm gonna make another heart. I'm gonna put this one next to it so I can see about the size. And remember that ink is gonna disappear. And I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch me cut that out. Score this wonder under. And once I take it off, because it's been 30 seconds, the sticky side stays on the fabric. And I didn't do this the first couple tags because I'm learning and it did fray. So I don't want it to fray again. If I spent, you know, a couple hours stitching the last thing and I'm eyeballing it, I'm not worried about the centering exactly. I am not an OCD person. And my stitching will cover up that little black line, but if it bothers you, And then the same thing with the hearts. We gotta take off the back. And I don't know what I'm gonna do for the uh, embroidery stitches. I won't know until I'm sitting in my recliner figuring that out. 
but it's gonna be something like this. And I might do this for the back and bring it around to the front. I'm not sure yet. And that's, like I said, that's gonna be a whole nother ball game. So let's just put the hearts on. I'm not going to sew this on yet because I want to sew, I'm not going to iron that on yet because I want to stitch all the way around this first. And then I'm going to, after I stitch around here, I will come back and put this on. One of the best tips I can give you is to get a little container to put all your little pieces in because it's so easy to lose them because it takes two or three days of stitching to complete a, a slow stitch tag. So there's how you use the Wonder Under, and there's how you make a tag. This one has the, uh, and you know, I didn't line it up exactly, so I can lop that off. And now I'm going to go sew around it. So now I'll go and sit in my recliner and do some slow stitching, and I will be back soon. Well, hello, I am back, and I've spent a few days stitching. I like to either stitch in quiet, praying and pondering, or I listen to one of my favorite Bible teachers or the God Journey podcast, because the whole purpose of this challenge is to spend some time with God so we can grow more intimately connected to God, because that's what it's all about, walking in union with Him. And when you have something like this that you commit to do weekly, it's more time that you will spend with Him weekly. You're making a habit of spending your time with him. So I will not be teaching you how to do any embroidery because I am brand new at embroidery. <clears throat> um, as you could probably tell by my stitches. So I'm learning myself and there are dozens of YouTube videos that show you step by step how to do stitches correctly. I feel like doing these tags I have learned something new about stitching or the placement or the wonder under whatever every week and this week I have several things that I can show you that I wished I would have done differently. Number one is I wished I would have used a different font. This was a difficult font to embroidery at this size. I actually probably should have used the font that you see here that's a print and not a cursive. I usually use three stitches. The running stitch that you see that goes across the whole tag is called shashiko or just a plain running stitch. It's very popular in slow stitching groups. And then the blanket stitch, which all you have to do is type in blanket stitch on YouTube and you can see how to do it. I have around the edges. And then I have just a plain back stitch on the words. And again, you, all you have to do is type in back stitch and you'll see how to do that. And your font is going to be very, very important. So those are the main things that I wanted to share with you um, about what I've done this week. If you don't use Wonder Under, you're going to see some raveling around your edges. So that's important. And here, I forgot to, I didn't uh, videotape this part, but I just used some Wonder Under to iron under on another layer. Just I thought it would give it a little bit more dimension to have another layer. And if you're worried about your stitches and practicing your stitches, try some gingham. And even with the gingham as a guide, I still got a little crooked, but that slow stitching is not about perfection. It's about relaxing and taking time and just enjoying the process. Just enjoying some time with yourself, some time to think and pray and ponder, and developing a habit of growing your relationship with God to be more intimately connected to Him. So that's all for now. I hope this was helpful to you, and I hope you enjoyed it. We have a slow-stitch Bible journal Facebook group 
with some active members. And then we have an even bigger Bible journal group that we mainly do things on paper. So I hope you get to visit both of those. Bye-bye for now.